Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, as I offer a few words this morning, I beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I wonder uh, today, as we listen to the story, the gospel story uh, about um, the woman who has a sick child, if uh, you have... Uh, perhaps in your own life ever been so needful of help that you would take anything to get it. I wonder if you've ever been in so much pain that you would do anything to make it stop. I wonder if you're a parent who's so worried about their child you would go to any length to save them. This is who the woman is for us, and she deeply needs, as James says in the epistle lesson, she deeply needs a little bit of mercy. She needs a little bit of love. She needs a little bit of healing, and she would do anything uh, to get it. She is so burdened, uh, as uh, I could testify, and I'm sure there are others, that when one of yours is ill, you, your life is just upside down. And she has this level of pain that has brought her to seek out Jesus in the hopes that maybe something could be done. Maybe uh, she might be healed of this pain that she's suffering, this trauma she's going through, and most of all, her daughter. She is something like another woman in the scripture that you may remember, the woman and the judge. Parable about this woman who goes to the judge, but the judge does not grant her what she needs, which is justice. And so she continues to ask the judge for what is needed until he gives in and gives her justice. There are indeed times when you and I are the same. We find ourselves outside of uh, this encounter looking in, but this, this is us <laughs> uh, quite clearly. And the issue here for us arises because of the challenge uh, living in bodies in this physical world where we do experience suffering and sadness. The fact in this case is that the petition is first rejected and the woman and daughter Uh, after uh, Jesus does grant mercy or healed. And that is just confusing. (laughs) And we should name it. Like this is a confusing lesson to us. And part of that is that as human beings, we find it difficult to understand that God is loving, is caring, and is merciful, and yet we as human beings suffer. Now, there are a lot of people who can go into this much deeply, but as the comedian uh, said last night that I was watching on TV, I went to an Episcopal church, and they were out in an hour. I went to my mom's church, and they didn't finish for two days, so we're going to leave that to those theologians and just offer you this. I believe with my whole heart that God is loving in the face of suffering. And that the truth is not that some of us are blessed and some of us are not. Rather, the complicated truth about God and the world that we live in is that it is, in the language of Christianity, fallen. It is not what God would want. It is not the creation that God would have. Uh, It is broken. And there is suffering in it. And for literally thousands of years, we who are followers of this God and of Jesus and the Spirit have wrestled with that very fact. And we would prefer not to have the world be that way. 
And what's interesting about it is that we tend to put this off on God instead of understanding that the world itself is just broken and quite frankly, Andy Doyle, your bishop, is a broken, sinful human being. Needful of God's grace and mercy and love. And that as much as Paul would say that I try to do the right things at every moment in my life, there are times when I do not. And that I do cause suffering and pain for others. As much as I would want not to have that. And I must accompany as a pastor, and I know you've done this too. You accompany people who are going through just terrible circumstances of pain, cancers that actually won't be healed. Right? Of death, that does come. But the truth about this and the signs that were given in the Syrophoenician woman, which is typically what she's called, and her daughter, and the sign that we are given in the blind man is that God continues to be a God of love and a God of mercy despite the world that we live in, despite how we treat one another, despite our own brokenness, God continues to offer us a path forward, a way of living in his shadow that helps us to do better and to recognize that while there is suffering in the world, that it will not have the last word. Yet my Redeemer lives. Death is conquered. It will not be the end. Suffering, no matter how bad it is for someone, is not going to have the last word in this world or the next because of Jesus. And the fact that Jesus is present in our lives. Now, I want to go a little further here and say that what we as Christians must do is actually to practice a depth of relationship with Jesus and with God that helps us remember this. Because if you're like me, you're going to forget all of this about the time we hit the barbecue in the next room. Right? Like, it's hard to do this for six days and 23 hours, which is the rest of your life over the next week. But if daily we will remember that on this day we came forward and asked, put our hands, our broken hands up, and ask for a little measure, a sign, right? People are always asking Jesus for a sign. Every Sunday, you all in this place have a sign at that altar of bread and wine which is a sign of that love and grace. And I would offer that if tomorrow, at some point in your day, you stop and remember that and were quiet for just a little while and then were grateful for all that you have and petition God to help you see beyond whatever problem you have To help God see that this, whatever this difficult thing that's in front of you isn't going to be the whole of life. As my friends in 12-step programs, you can do anything for a little while. God, show me when the little while that's now taken a year is going to be over. Right? And it's just that kind of idea that every day we've just got to give God a few minutes of our life to remember God's love. To remember God's grace. To remember God's impartiality, as the scripture says, with God's love. And only then do we stand a chance to resist the evil that is out there. The fallen creation. The the, the all too easy willingness to go along instead of remembering this deep fact. That God is pouring out God's mercy and love into the world. Now, I would suggest that one of the things that has always made this congregation strong is truly to move beyond its kind of myopic eyes to understand that there are needs in the world around it. 
and to participate in helping the city and the county. And I want to suggest that your rector over these last few years has done the same and reminded you on a regular basis of God's love and God's care and that he has been faithful in sitting with you at times of suffering, at times when your loved ones were dying, at times when you just needed a listening ear, someone who could show you exactly what we do here on Sundays, but at a hospital or in your home or over the phone, even an email. Thank God for that. Thank God that we have been here to receive that from him. But as your bishop for now uh, 16 something years, yeah, it's a long time of suffering, isn't it? <laughs> 16 years. I give thanks for you. Because this table is set here in the wilderness of a world, just like Tyre. And that people may find this table. And they may find God's grace. And that's thanks to your stewardship, your giftedness, your faithfulness, your <coughs> desire to do good work, as James calls us to, in the name of God's mercy. So praise be to God for you all. And for the record you have, goodness, what a joy to be back with you today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.